Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Here are six benefits of working with smart objects in Photoshop. First, I will view and target this layer of the cherry blossom. Now to convert a layer to a smart object, we can choose layer, smart objects, and convert to smart object, or it might be more efficient to right click or control click on Mac on the layer in the layers panel and choose convert to smart object using the context sensitive menus. We know that it's a smart object because of the smart object icon in the layers panel. So the first benefit is that Photoshop will now keep track of all of the information in that layer so we don't lose any image quality when making changes to the layer like transformations or distortions. For example, I'll choose Edit and then Free Transform and I'll scale down and apply that transformation. Later, even if I've saved and closed the file and reopened it, if I change my mind and use Free Transform again to scale the image larger, we can see that when I apply the transformation, we didn't lose any image quality. Second, once you have a smart object, you can then add a filter to the smart object non-destructively. I'll choose Filter and then Stylize and select Oil Paint. We can make our adjustments and then apply the filter. Once applied, this filter can then be re-edited at any time by double-clicking on the name of the filter in the Layers panel. I'll disable the lighting option and go ahead and apply the changes. Third, we can convert several layers into a single smart object and transform them all at once. Here I'll make all of the layers visible that I want to include on this label. Then I'll select the top layer, hold down the Shift key, and select the bottom layer to select all of the layers in between. Then I'll right click or control click on Mac and convert them to a single smart object. I'll select Edit and then Free Transform to scale the label. The reason that the bounding box is a bit outside of the visible area is because of that oil paint filter that we applied. Then I'll click on the warp icon and I can start with a preset like cylinder. I can adjust the label to fit the bottle and control the amount of distortion. We can use the corner point to adjust the width and height on either side, and the top and bottom points to adjust the curve. The center point controls the amount of distortion that's applied. All right, let's apply that transformation and the warp. If I need to make adjustments to the individual layers within a smart object, I can choose Layer, Smart Objects, edit contents, or I can simply double click on the layer thumbnail in the layers panel. This opens the contents of the smart object in its own document where we now have access to all the layers. So that we can see both the parent document and the contents of the smart object, I'll select window and arrange and then tile. We don't have to do this, but I think it's easier to understand what's going on if we do. All right, I'll select these four layers and reposition them in the image area using the Move tool so that they're more towards the center of the label. When finished, we can choose File and then Save to save the changes, and we can see that the parent document is updated. Then I'll close the contents of the smart object. Next, let's see how easy it is to replace the contents of the smart object. I'll double-click to edit the contents of the smart object, then select the image with the photo, which is also a smart object. Then I'll choose Layer, Smart Objects, Replace Contents, or I can just right-click or control-click on Mac to choose Replace Contents from the context-sensitive menus. I'll select the file that I want to use, and Photoshop will replace it. If the contents of the smart object and the image that we're replacing it with aren't exactly the same, we might need to use Free Transform to scale the replaced image, but that's really not a problem because it was placed as a smart object, so we won't lose any quality when we transform it. We can see that Photoshop has automatically added the oil paint filter, so I'll save the changes, and then I'll close the smart object, and we can see again that the parent document has been updated. If I wanted to undo that change, I could do so using the Edit menu, but I prefer this version, so I'll choose to redo the update. Now another benefit is that we can duplicate instances of smart objects. Here I'll view the three layers that make up an illustration of a flower. 
Then I'll select them all in the Layers panel, and I'll convert these three layers into a single Smart Object by right-clicking or control-clicking on Mac and selecting Convert to Smart Object. Then I'll duplicate the Smart Object using Layer, New, and then Layer via Copy, or I could hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows and drag to duplicate the layer in the Layers panel. Then I'll use Command T or Control T on Windows to access free transform and scale the duplicated flower smaller and reposition it. Now double clicking on either layer thumbnail will show the contents of the smart object so that I can edit it. I'll choose Window, Arrange, Tile again, then I'll double click on the shape layer icon to display the color picker and choose a slightly lighter color and apply it. Then we can save those edits using Command S on Mac or Control S on Windows and close the smart object and we can see that both instances of the smart object were updated. Finally, to make this a bit more realistic, I'll target the cherry layer and click the new layer icon to add a new blank layer. Then I'll tap B to select the brush tool, tap 1 to set the opacity of the brush to 10%, and using a large soft edge brush, I'll just paint along the edge of the bottle. Because I only want the paint to appear on the label, I'll select Layer and then Create Clipping Mask. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.